You might remember the famous story of Elijah praying to end the three-year drought. What had happened in Israel is that for three years, there was no rain. There was crop failure, famine hit the land, and then God told Elijah that it was time to pray for rain. So the old prophet climbs up on the mountain and commits himself to prayer. He doesn't just shoot up a quick, God, please end the rain, right? Because he knows that, frankly, those prayers don't really affect much. The story tells us that he really commits himself to prayer. And then he has his servant go look to see if anything's happening. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. I love that. I love his willingness to have a go, see what happens, and then adjust himself to the report. The servant comes back and says, no, no rain. So Elijah goes back to prayer, and then he sends his servant a second time. Eight times this happens. Eight times he keeps at it. This is a man who is willing to learn, willing to grow, willing to stick with it, and his prayers have a dramatic result. The rain comes and ends the drought. Friends, we can learn to pray like that. Really? In the book of James, the brother of Jesus is giving his readers a tutorial on prayer. He brings us back to the old prophet on the mountain, praying there for rain, and then he makes a staggering connection. You are no different than Elijah. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. That phrase, Elijah was a man just like us, James included that because he wants us to know that we can do it too. When it comes to the power of prayer, Elijah was just like us. We can do that also.